Not no two minutes. I want to invite you to come forward, please, if you're behind me. Let's make use of the burgundy seats. They are more comfortable than benches. And we want to look like we're together with the family and what, what is happening here this afternoon. So please come off the back if you would and just join us in the more immediate front and center. Thank you. Not the dead front, but the center at least. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ready. Testing. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath us have a last nouns. Would you stand with me, please, as we make our procession up at the top of the aisles? I will invite you to join me in the song, You Are God Alone, as we establish God is God, God alone. Now, this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we 
shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abundant in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor shall not be in vain in the Lord. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your God alone, would you join me in singing? Join us in singing, let's sing. From the depths of our beings, worship unto the Lord.
bless the name of the Lord. He is God, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. He's God and God alone. We're here to worship him this evening. May I say a good afternoon to everyone? Good afternoon. A blessed good afternoon. I know it's not for the family. It would feel like a good afternoon to you. But we're here to join you in your time of mourning and sadness and your tears to offer ourselves as a means of encouragement and strength and hope in the time of death and in your tears. So we join the family of Amari Tashawn Small as we mourn the loss of this young man at the age of 15 as it is. Daily beloved, we are gathered today to pay our final tribute of respect to that which was mortal of our deceased loved one and friend. To you, all members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer our deep and indeed our sincere sympathy. And may we share with you the comfort afforded by God's word for such a time and an hour and an occasion as this. In the words of Jesus Christ as found in the New International Version, which reads, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms, or the King James will say mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. The Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. In like manner, Jesus also says in John's Gospel, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Job in his trouble said these words, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. In like manner, he also says, and the Apostle Paul tells some of these words, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And finally, the psalmist says in these words, Lord, make me to know my end and the number of my days, that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man living is altogether vanity. This being the word of the Lord, let the people say amen. Amen. We shall continue to sing um, another hymn, um, The Goodness of God. And indeed, in spite of all that's happening, we still proclaim God's goodness in this hour. Thank you.
to read together if you don't mind the psalm at this time commencing let's together I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is thy keeper the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Again, let the people say, Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Family members, if you don't mind, I want to invite you around the casket. Mother, father, all others, family members. Just a front and side of the casket for prayer let's go back to the song that we sang so well I must say I love your voice you've led me through the fire in darkest nights they're close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I've lived in the goodness of God your goodness is running after me you want to claim God's goodness in spite of our pain this afternoon Love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, the sovereign God of all the universe, the one who made heaven and the earth, we recognize that we are creatures and you are the creator. And we recognize that in ourselves we are really nothing. We are weak. We don't have the strength to carry on at all times. We're not smart enough. We're not capable enough. We don't have all the skill sets. 
But God, you are the God who is unchangeable, unstoppable, and the God who can do all things, and there's none like you. And so, like the psalmist just said, we lift our eyes to you, recognizing that our help comes from the Lord who is maker of heaven and earth, the God who neither slumbers or sleeps, the God who preserves from all evil, and our going out and our coming in, you are the preserver. And so, Lord, we turn to you for help, for strength in this time of weakness, in this time of tears, that you will give us the peace and the joy that we need to carry on. Here's a family in mourning, losing a young 15-year-old boy on Mary, Lord. And no doubt this hurts. But I pray for a mother who is weak here this evening. I pray for a father who tries to be strong. A grandmother and a great grandmother and other family members who try to be strong in this time. I pray, God, that they will learn to trust you. You can give them the peace. You can give them the strength. You can give them the stability. You can help them to bounce back. Life has to go on. And God, they don't have to quit in life, but they can go on. Keep him in memory, but at the same time, seeking to serve you. I pray, Father, you would in, 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 by your presence manifest yourself in this service. You speak to our hearts. Remind us again of our immortality. Remind us that death comes to everyone, whether in youth, middle age, or old age. And God, it is important that we prepare to meet our God. You've given us the opportunity to come to a place of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And I pray somebody today, out of this service, will come to that place. Bless this family. Strengthen them again. Help them to know that your word says they can cast all their cares upon you. You, you. you care for them. And that your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. If they would allow you to be their shepherd and their Lord. I pronounce your blessings and kindness benediction on them in Jesus' name. And let all the people join me to say, Amen. Amen. God bless your family. You can go to your places. God be with you. God be with you. Remain standing. You may all sit. I'm going to invite these two individuals to the platform, Fiona Kalusi and Shana Knight. Would you both come on the platform? We're going to have the eulogy at this time, followed by the solo. Good evening, church. My name is Fiona Colucci, also known as Amari's favorite teacher and his second mummy. I have the task today to deliver Amari's eulogy that has been created by his family and his friends. Amari Teixeon Small was born on July 12, 2007 to Tamisha Botsell and Antonio Small. He attended the Lufathorn Memorial Primary School where he graduated to the St. Lucy Secondary and later transferred to the St. George Secondary School. We give thanks to the Almighty for giving us the opportunity to spend 15 wonderful years with Amari on this earth. Amari was a beloved son, brother, grandson, great-grandson, nephew, cousin, student, and friend to many. He was loving, friendly, jovial, and helpful. I can attest to these characteristics, being Amari's teacher, not once, but twice in his academic journey. Amari and I had this special bond where Tamisha found herself complaining to me instead of I complaining to her. She would come and say, Miss Colucci, tell Amari this for me, because he always listens to his Miss Colucci. I would laugh, and Amari would look up at me with those eyes, red said, oh dear, I'm in trouble. Those are the same eyes that greeted me when Amari broke his hand in reception. Amari walked up to me with not a tear and said, Miss Colucci, I fell. I, on the other hand, looked down at Amari with tears in my eyes and said, you didn't only fall, son, but I think you broke your hand. 
We have, we have to call mummy. And Mary gave me the eyes again, sat patiently while I, triggered, I tried to figure out how I was going to tell Tamisha. Well, I was the only person with tears that day. I can see where Amari got his bravery from because Tamisha's response was, okay, I'm on my way. Amari was determined and always attempted whatever task he was given. And if it's B, he would stay back some evenings to help me in the classroom and also have some one-on-one -on -one sessions. I always told him he would make me proud no matter what he decided to do in life. At his graduation, at this same church, the words were no different, but this time he said it with me while giving me this huge hug and this bright smile. As promised, he continued to try his best, and Tamisha included me every step of the way by sending me his reports, updating me with his progress, and not forgetting the pictures. Amari exuded a great love for his mother, brother, family, teachers, and friends. But Amari had a special kind of love for his great granny, Idelia. Somehow, he always managed to share even his meals with her. If anyone offered him a meal, he would always let it be known it had to be big enough to share with his granny. Amari was caring and always found a way to show appreciation to those he loved. For his mom's birthday, Amari said, Mom, I have no money, but I want to take you out. Tamisha smiled and asked, where are you taking me? And his response was, the beach. With every challenge, Amari would find a solution for the ones he loved. Amari had this knack of attracting people to him. Persons who called to offer their condolences recalled a story or the occasion where they met Amari. We also learned that at school, if you wanted to find someone, most times look for a Mary, and that student could be found. This also occurred at home. Even the neighborhood children followed him to Bible school during summer vacations. Not only was he one that was followed, but he was also one who exhibited great concern for others, especially his friends. In class one at primary school, much to our annoyance, Amari would arrive home around 5 p.m. We were extremely puzzled as he lived within walking distance of the school. We tried everything possible to get him to come home early, but nothing worked. As time progressed, we came to understand that one of his friends remained at school late due to their parents' arrival after school hours. Amari, being the true friend he is, took it upon himself to stay with his friend until he was collected. Amari's godmother, Dawn, recalls, he recalls the many times she shouted through the bus window, Amari, try and go home. I am going to tell Tammy. Granny Sandra remembered how Amari gave her such a fright as she could not find him after school one evening. After searching high and low, with all sorts of thoughts running through her mind, Amari was found eating a roti at Shafet. For those who don't know, Amari loved to eat and cook. Amari was nicknamed Top Chef by his cousins, as, you, as he would cut pasta dishes for them. Not the well-known ramen, but two or three different pastors together along with a gravy. Actually, the last thing Amari did just minutes before his death was to cook for his brother and himself. Granny Gail will always remember and cherish the exciting times spent with Amari. Angelina said, there are numerous memories they have of Amari, but the one which is her favorite and takes the cake is this. On Saturday, February the 18th, he had asked for a ride to the barber shop. Suddenly, he asked for the car keys. She became confused and wondered why. On going outside, she saw Amari in the driver's seat, asking her for instructions on how to start the car. Happening to glance up the road, she saw three girls around Amari's age minding their business walking down the road. Amari clearly had plans to impress them as they walked past the car. Amari also had a love for football, horse racing, and athletics. As a matter of fact, 
Amari ran the 100 and 200 meter races at his school sports and placed first in one of the races. The house he represented, Blue, was the overall winner. When it came to football, his, he, his dad said the two of them would argue excitedly about the games. We all know which team Amari defended and argued for. Jackie, his aunt, remembers the day when Amari was at, upset at something his cousins did to him. They caught the transport board bus in front of Luther Thorne Primary School, got out at the bus stop in front of Old Banks Brewery. For those who don't know, that is one bus stop to the next. This occurred the second day after a new law had passed that school children were to travel free on the bus. I guess they wanted to test the theory. To his friends, classmates, knowing Amari, he would not wish for you to remain sad, but to remember the joy and love he gave each of you in his own special way. Most likely, at this moment, Amari is probably dancing and entertaining the persons in heaven with his charm. Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let us find comfort in the special moments and the love we, re we received from our Amari. I surely, as I reflect on Amari, maturing from the four-year-old I first met to the 15-year-old gentleman he became, heartfelt thanks to everyone who showed support in any way possible during this time of bereavement. Words cannot express the sorrow and loss we are feeling at this moment, but time is a great healer. Today, we say goodbye, Amari, until we meet again. We have gained a special guardian angel who holds a special place in our hearts. Rest in peace and rise in glory. Always remembered and never forgotten. Love always your family, friends, teachers, and classmates. Amen. Like a comet blazing across the evening sky, gone too soon. Like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye. Gone too soon Shiny and sparkly And splendidly bright Here one day Gone one night Like the lost of sunlight On a cloudy afternoon Like a castle built upon a sandy beach, gone too soon. Like a perfect flower that is just beyond your reach, gone too soon. Born to amuse, to inspire, to delight. Here one day, 
gone one night Like a sunset Dying with the rising of the moon Gone Gone too soon is appropriate words. Someone at 15 years, as I listen to the eulogist describing the sort of young man he was, caring, remain with a friend until he is collected. That's a, a caring person. You have to give him enough food that he can share with um, Is it grand or great grand? And you know, that, that's a caring youngster. You don't find many youngsters like that, I must admit. So um, certainly he'll be missed by, by all. Friend, indeed he was. We want to stand and sing the next hymn. It's one of the traditional ones now. And can it be? Anybody who's a Methodist? Let me see your hand. Who's a Methodist here? All right. Well, you, it's your song. This is a Methodist um, standard uh, anthem you say. So, and can it be? So let's stand, please, everybody. Let's stand and sing. And we're going to take an offering. Let me again stand, please, everybody. Young, old, school children, everybody. Stand, please. The presence of the Lord. And you sing better when you're standing. Let me say again what I often said, in case you have not been here before. Um, often say, this offering is going to be divided between the church and towards the burial. So the more of it that we can give, it helps to have bigger halves, if I might put it that way. More so, especially to help the family. We are friends. Let's show our friendship in a tangible way. Thank you as we sing, and can it be. Thank you. And the ushers are in the front, so you have to come to them, please.
God we serve. Would you bow with me as we ask God's blessing on this offering? And Father, we thank you that we, as an expression of our care and concern for this family, as well as your gospel, we can give to this cause. I pray your blessings on it, your blessings on the people who would have given out of hearts that really care. And Father, we know you give more than we can give to you. You give in, in greater kind. So I pray your blessings now on each one, and, and may you get glory and honor. As we spend this money, we spend the glory, the honor, the prayers, and the blessing of others in Jesus' name. And let the people say... Amen. You may sit, please, and thank you so much. Rashi this morning is going to come to read the scripture as found in James chapter 4, 13 through 17. Good afternoon. The Bible reading is taken from James chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know, excuse me, not, sh not shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away? For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, shall live, and do this or that, but that ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, therefore to him that knoweth to do good, excuse me, and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Here ends the Bible reading. Thank you. Thank you, Rashida, for your reading. If you were following what was just read, there is a question asked in that passage. The question is, and what is your life? And then it answers by saying, it is even as a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away or dissipates, is the word I prefer to use if I have to put in the word there. Disappears. Let me just give us now what, what, what that, to illustrate that. One in training that in college and Bible college and in my, in the time I went to college, um, we were, the college is situated in the Santa Cruz Valley. Um, that's Brian Lara's um, constituency as well. And of course, if you're in a valley, it means there are either hills or mountains. In this case, the, the northern mountain ridge was trained out all around us. So you're in the valley. Many, and this was a boarding college, or is still. Many mornings, many of us came out at about five, just after five on the balcony. And at that time, it would be rather chilly. That's how it feels on morning sometimes, but chilly earlier yeah, in Trinidad. Very chilly, and after a while, you know, and, and of course, outside is white, white, white. You can't see the mountains. You knew they were there when you went to sleep, but you don't see them. Everything is just white, and you're cold, chilly. So you're going back inside and, and, and allow the sun to come over the mountain range and all that. And then you came out after when you realized, hey, look up. You saw everything. The, 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 the mist had disappeared or dissipates, as I like to say. The Bible is telling us what we just read just now. Our lives are like that. We are here for a little while, 
and then they are gone. Of course, nobody expects to go at 15. If all of us had a choice, we would all rather like to live long, live healthy, uh, enjoy life, and then die. maybe some old grandfather, grandmother, the kids might be. But there's no guarantee that is the way life is going to happen. You know, they say there are four questions that we should all ask ourselves or ask and get answers. Those questions are one, who am I? Two, where did I come from? Three, what am I doing here? And fourth, where do I go from here? Who am I? Where did I come from? What am I doing here? Where do I go from here? Questions. What is your life? I didn't take the time to notice it, but it's here, yes. At the front of the program, you're going to see 2007 dash 2023. 2023. It was the dash between 7 and 2023 is life. His life. Only 15 years. The funny thing about that is if you live 71 or you live 101, they put the same dash. The dash will be like longer because you live long or shorter because you're 15 years. The dash represents how you have lived in this life. What is your life? May I say to you, friends, and especially see so many young uh, youngsters here. Uh, you know, life is a gift. Life is a gift. In fact, think of it for a little while. Anybody um, woke up themselves this morning? Anybody did that? Did you actually wake up yourself? You might think so. You might think so. You had an alarm. No, 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 my friends. The alarm could have gone on and you were dead, if anything. But no, it is God that has given you life. Live, life is a gift. I remember watching cartoons, which I don't watch now, anyhow. But, um, you know, you, you had this, this, this um, um, picture of the, the coyote and the roadrunner. The roadrunner is running the coyote, trying to catch a coyote, doing everything to catch a coyote. And, 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 um, and then, as, as it runs, sometimes something big and, and heavy comes down and flattens the coyote. Flat! Like a big pancake. But then because it's Hollywood land, that flat thing eventually, then it is, and then it gets up and run again. You can do that in cartoon land. You can do that through Hollywood, but you can't do that in real life. There comes a time when life comes to an end, my friends. What is your life in this? Life is a gift, youngsters. And let me say this to the young people here especially, because we got... Big adults like myself, who want to tell young people you're young only once, so enjoy your life. What that means? I'm 67, I'll be 67 only once, and I didn't enjoy my life too. For those who are older than me, like the great grand, however age you are, at whatever state, whether young, whether childhood, whether young adult, whether teenagers, uh, whether, whether, whether middle of life or whatever, you get one chance at each stage. You got it once. What do you do with it? What does it mean to enjoy your life? Just have a good time. But let me tell you something. Many are dead today because of a good time. Many are regretting they had that good time. Many have lived to regret. And many, and you can walk once for yourself, many, their brains are blown because they were having a good time. The Bible says to young people, he said once was young, <laughs> as David would say. The Bible says to young people, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. You know why that is so? Now, you, you youngsters, anybody here in construction? Any youngsters in construction at your school? Any construction at all? As a skill? Anybody here can tell you how you build a house? I, I, when I got my bill, I realized I, I watched I watch the procedure very If I had to, you're spending money, so you got to watch the procedure. <laughs> the, the excavator came and took out the dirt. Took out the dirt. That was done in a matter of hours. Then three men came and spent two weeks down in there. For the first couple of days, all they did was scrape, scrape, scrape the dirt, the, the, the dirt off of all the rock so they get as much as all the dirt they could get out, got out. And then they poured in concrete. And of course, somebody did steel, and they put in steel, and then, and what they call that, the foot in. And then they put blocks on top of that until they passed the surface up to a certain height. And that was the foundation for my house. Let me give you a different story now. I was pastor at St. Christopher, the young lady over there who sang now what I'm talking about. I did six years up there. And one day I'm going down to, it would be Goodland. And I'm going down to Goodland. And as I walked down, I saw a house, I think it was pink or peach. This house had so many cracks. I mean, the cracks were so, so big or so white. 
that you could put your hand like this and push your hand through some of them. It was that bad. I could not believe a house could look so bad. And I stood there watching. I said, but nobody can live in that. Well, as I said that to myself, a man stepped out in the veranda. And seeing me look at the house, the man invited me. Well, since I stood up over him, I felt was over me. So I went in too. And look over the house. A couple of months later, I went back into Goodland. That house was no longer standing. Either it fell on its own or it had to push it down. You know why? The foundation was bad, but it means a big word on your young people. The foundation was compromised. If you didn't put in the right in the foundation, the structure will not stand firmly. It will crack and it will fall. And young people, your life at your age as a gift that you now have from God is a foundation time. You better put in the right things in your foundation. Education is only one part of it, but that's a part of it. What will faith in God? What will knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I thought just believing in God and praying, as everybody likes to tell me. I thought knowing Jesus Christ because there's only one Savior, and God in that Savior is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You can't come to the Father, but by Him. So don't tell me you're praying all that. That ain't mean a pang if you're coming through Christ. It don't mean a thing. You're fooling yourself with religion. And so I say to you, my young friends, and to all, life is a gift, one that we must admit we take for granted. You know something about gifts, though? No? You know some boy really give, I, I, I listened to the, uh, you know, the, the, the lady talk about how the guy asked, you know, Mario has asked for the keys and he set up himself to look good to impress. I understand that. <laughs> we, young, we, we, we who are young, you who are young understand that. All right. We see gifts. If you know some boy give a gift that really care about you, you tend to cherish that gift. Am I right or wrong? It's it. Oh, a couple of years ago, I said to the, the congregation, I said to you now, I, I had a perfume that lasted me about two years. You know, you just, you know how we men put out perfume? Pip, 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 and that's the end of that. You ladies take a long pull on the thing. It's a difference. And the perfume went down and went down, went down to the last, but I wouldn't put it down till I got to where it couldn't go no more. And then, and then I took up the new one that I had now over a year. You know what the name of it? Obsession, if you please. Good name. But well, because somebody gave it to me and I cherish it, I'm now using it. I'm having all I know. You know what I mean? Cherish the gift of life, my friends. God gave you the gift. And my, and my father, you know, they were in the out. But them who give life, my friends, they can take it, but they can't give it. Only God can give life. It is a gift from God. And I want to say to you, cherish the gift and give it back to God. And he will bless it and multiply it in many ways. Two last points from this text that was just read. You see, what this text brings across to us, two th lessons quickly. That life is brief, very brief. Not just 15, but really brief. When I was a boy, old people looked at me like they had lived real long. That's how it felt. But at 67, I realized I got here rather quickly. And if I, if I ever carried the Bible to the literalism, I only got three more years. But of course, I'm going to 90, so I got 23. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> but who knows? I could die tomorrow. Life is really very, very brief. It's not as long as you think. You think you got time? No, no, no. Time, time moves along so fast. I, I'm, I've, I've been amazed as I watch people that I saw after COVID, and they look never like what they were before COVID. Some are drawn down, some are weakened, some have aged, some have looked, oh, well, well, whatever. I haven't met many that look better looking, they had a look worse. Sad to say. Sad to say. COVID has affected them. And who knows what else will come into our, our, our time to affect us, whether it's a virus or otherwise. Young people and other people, the best thing you can do with your life is commit it to the Lord. Know Jesus Christ. Let him be your shepherd. Let him be the one who leads you beside still waters and green pastures in the paths of righteousness. Let his goodness and mercy will follow you. Let Jesus Christ be your savior. Life is brief, very brief. And it seems to be getting more so now with the among the deaths that take place in the most uh, unlikely way. Secondly, not only is life brief, but life is uncertain. You know what I tell you, young people? You must have goals. You must do this. And, and that's, that's a good way to talk. It's the right thing to say. But you talk to some of the older ones like myself and the others in here who had goals, who had dreams, who had ambitions, who had plans, who had objectives. Where are we now? Some was on the, tra the track and we got off track. Some was on the highway, and we went down what we thought was a shortcut, and up as a, a nice, a nice, nice word of language, it's called the sac, probably French, but really dead end. 
You go get a U-turn and get out, and some people can't make a U-turn. I thought driving out, a U-turn in life. Turn around, repent, come back to God. So many of us, and, and, and let me say to the young people, on behalf of the older people, or the old people to you, a lot of we big ones are looking positive, we're knocking and saying, and, and making all kinds of talk and chest on, we just put it on papi show. A lot of us are happy on the inside. A lot of us ain't comfortable with ourselves. A lot of us don't even like ourselves anymore. A lot of us have regrets. A lot of us have shame. A lot of us have embarrassment. A lot of us pretending to be happy when in fact we know that we are going wrong and we are wrong. And we don't want to bust up. But God already knows because so let's come clean with God. We had plans. We had dreams. You always remember that sweet do do you marry? Do do then and darling then. But now he's a dog. You understand it all? Life changes. Life is uncertain. And nobody, including myself here, the preacher, none of us can dictate nor control life. I have learned a long time to let Jesus Christ be my Savior, let him be my Lord, let him be my shepherd, let him be my master, let him lead my life, let him guide my life, let, him, let his will be done in my life. And I have nothing to worry about. Somebody say, you ask me why I'm happy, you ask me why I'm free. And it's because of Jesus Christ. I'm a better man than nobody. I came out of the hall just over there. That's where I was born. That's where I grew up, I should say. I born in St. John. But I grew up over there. A poor nobody. A poor nobody. I went to the car, I went to the car, and, and, and all the heavy ones. But the Lord saved me as a teenager. Amen. And the Lord has directed my life to this point. Amen. And I say to everybody, in my went to Harrison's, Queens, Cormier, and all them schools, or Parkinson like me, or St. George, or some of us are represented here. No, no, boy, put you down, my friends. It's not where you are or where you come from. It's where you're going. That matters. Better know Jesus Christ. You don't know what God would do in your life. I would never have dreamed or dreamt that I would be what I am today. And I'm and I sure God ain't finished with me yet at this stage. Who knows what he will do with you? All I can tell you, Give your lives over to Jesus Christ. The question is again, and what is your life? Is it just like a vapor to appear for a little while and then disappears? Or can it be solid by placing it in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ? I invite you, all of you, and young people in particular, know Jesus Christ. You see, a funeral? A funeral is about tears and sadness. It's about death. But you can find life in a situation of death. Jesus Christ met a man on a tree and told him, salvation come to you today. Met a man at night and told him, you can be born again. Met a woman at a well and said, but you can get living water. Met a woman caught in the desert, but I can give you a new chance. Start fresh. So even at a funeral, where there's death, you can have life through Jesus Christ. Would you say amen? Tomorrow, it's not too late. It may be too late, I should say. But today is the accepted time.
Listen. Jesus said, here I stand. Won't you please take my hand? And you say, Lord, I will, but tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplied all your needs. And you say, Lord, I know I will, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll give begin today. It's not, um, it's a very serious message. It's an invitation to every one of you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, why well, don't you do that today? That's what the song is all about. We're going to stand. We understand the mother in her distress. Let's all stand, please, as we come to a close. We're going to have the benediction, closing prayer. I'm going to invite the power bearers right after to please come after prayer. Father, as we bring this service to a close, we've taken time to remember a Mary, but most of all, we've taken time to think about ourselves and to reflect on the fact that you love us and that Jesus died for us and that today is the time your word says, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. And you call on us 
to, to acknowledge our, our need for our Savior, even Jesus Christ. I pray, God, as we close this service and as we go from here, there'll be time to introspect, to reflect, to think, and to come to a place of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Again, I commit this mother and all family members, Lord, in their time of distress and pain, that they will learn to lean on you for your strength and your grace at this time. We give prayers and everything. To you be the glory in Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen. I know who was tomorrow. I'm going to invite Paul Bears to please come. There's our song as we make our research, you know. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow. I just left from that today. I don't borrow from the sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry about the future.
Take your time, take your time, take your time, take your time. One by one. One by one. Yes. Like that. Come. Come this way, Mark. Okay. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. Okay. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. but a short time to live and is full of misery. He coming from when it's cut down like a flower. He flew as it were a shadow and never continue in one stay. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor, but of thee, O Lord, who for all sins are just in his pleas. Though knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts, shut not the merciful ears to our prayer, but spirits, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as I have pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our late deceased and marry to Sean Small, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, thus. To us. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day, 
and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is coming in glory, in glorious minds to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed, and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Could we all say the Lord's Prayer together, everyone? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, they shall rest from their levels. Thus saith the Spirit. Amen. I trust he may rest in peace. Take your time. the streamers are giving you recorded music. You can sing along with them as well at that point. Thank you.
brother and sister at this time, for family and for all. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord mercifully and graciously cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you to grant to each one of you his grace, peace, mercies, and blessings through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, and may all the people say in one voice, Amen. Amen. I do wish a good afternoon to the family. A better tomorrow. We know this is painful at the moment. With God's help, you're going to make it. And there are friends here, as well as family members, and I'm here as well. And we're here for you to bounce back and to get on with life. God bless you as you go forward. Final song, God will take him and dedicate to the family. One of those old hymns, so just listen on as our streamers play. Thank you as well. Thank you. 
couldn't wait for you.